Hi everybody, hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I have four separate immigration updates to share with you. I have an update regarding a new travel ban from people that are in India seeking entry to the United States. I have an update for you regarding USCIS canceling biometrics for certain types of cases. I have an update for you regarding USCIS enacting a new policy which will give deference to prior case approval. And I also have an update for you regarding USCIS seeking public feedback on barriers to receiving certain immigration benefits to the United States. We have a lot to go over in today's video, so make sure to stick around. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Ashuri and I'm a US immigration lawyer based in Los Angeles, California. At my law firm, we work with clients from all 50 states and worldwide. And we regularly publish videos to keep you up to date with the latest immigration news and tips. So if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button now. Also, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up so that YouTube knows to share this information with more people. So as I mentioned in today's video, we have a lot to go over. We have an update regarding a new travel ban enacted against people that have been in India within the last 14 days. We're gonna discuss that in some detail. Again, as I mentioned, we have an update regarding a new policy from USCIS to issue deference to prior case approvals. I'll go into a little bit about what that means. And finally, we have an update regarding USCIS seeking public feedback regarding various barriers to get certain immigration benefits. So let's start off by discussing our first update of today's video, which is about a new travel suspension for certain people that have been physically present within the Republic of India within the last 14 days. Basically what's going on is that there has been a rapid spread of COVID-19 throughout the Republic of India. And as a protective measure, the Biden administration has enacted a proclamation suspending the entry of certain non-citizens throughout India from coming to the United States if they have been physically present in India within the last 14 days. So I'm gonna share my screen with you in a moment and we'll go through this proclamation together and then I'll go over some important points. So take a look at my screen. So if you take a look at my screen, we're on the White House website right now and we're specifically on the page that discusses this new proclamation. And as you can see, it's dated April 30th, 2021. And the proclamation is titled, A Proclamation on the Suspension of Entry as Non-Immigrants of Certain Additional Persons Who Pose a Risk of Transmitting Coronavirus Disease 2019. And the top part of this proclamation basically discusses the various issues with the spread of COVID-19 throughout the Republic of India. The Republic of India accounts for over one-third of new global cases, and the number of new cases in the Republic of India is accelerating at a rapid rate. There have been more than 300,000 average new daily cases in the Republic of India over the past week. It also says a variant strain of the virus known as B1617 is also circulating in the Republic of India, along with other variant strains. So basically as a result, it's saying here, this is uh, President Biden, it says, I therefore hereby proclaim the following. The entry into the United States as non-immigrants of non-citizens who are physically present within the Republic of India during the 14-day period preceding their entry or attempted entry into the United States is hereby suspended and limited subject to Section 2 of this proclamation. So basically certain people that are affected by this proclamation are suspended from entering the United States if they have been physically present within the Republic of India within the last 14 day period. Now section two goes over all of the people that are not targeted by this proclamation. All the people that this proclamation does not apply to. And it says here, it does not apply to any lawful permanent resident of the United States, any non-citizen national of the United States, any non-citizen who is the spouse of a US citizen or permanent resident, any non-citizen who is the parent or legal guardian of a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident, provided that the U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident is unmarried and under the age of 21. And the list goes on. There are many people who are not targeted by this proclamation. And down here towards the bottom, it talks about the effective date that this proclamation will go into effect. And it says, 
This proclamation is effective at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on May 4th, 2021. Uh, and, and it discusses some more things as well. So now that we reviewed the text of the proclamation, let's answer some important questions. First important question is, who is affected by this proclamation? Well, this proclamation is primarily targeting people that are seeking entry to the United States as a non-immigrant. So people that might be seeking entry on a visitor visa or some other type of non-immigrant visa. But there are many classifications of people that are not subject to this proclamation. They are exempt from this proclamation, such as U.S. citizens, lawful permanent residents, the spouse of a U.S. citizen, the spouse of a lawful permanent resident, and there are multiple other classes of people who are not impacted. They are not subject to this proclamation. So that's the first important point that I want to mention. Now, the second important point that I want to mention is what specifically is going on in this proclamation. Again, what this proclamation does is that if somebody has been physically present within the Republic of India and they are subject to the proclamation, meaning they are targeted specifically by this proclamation, they have to go to another country. Basically, they have to go to another country that is not subject to one of these travel bans and wait for a 14-day period before seeking entry to the United States. If they have been physically present within India within the last 14 days, they are not permitted entry to the United States unless there's some sort of an exception that applies, like a national interest exception, or unless they're exempt from the proclamation. Now, the third important point that I want to mention is when does this proclamation go into effect? Well, it went into effect as of May 4th. Now let's move on to our second update of today's video, which is that USCIS will no longer be requiring biometrics for H4 applicants and L2 applicants. Basically, USCIS will no longer be requiring biometrics for the spouses of H1B visa holders and the spouses of L1 visa holders. Basically, a lawsuit was filed against USCIS due to substantial backlogs in the processing of these applications for H4 and L2s. And as a result, USCIS has announced that they will no longer be requiring biometrics for these case types. Again, biometrics will no longer be required for these case types. And again, as we mentioned, it's as a result of a lawsuit that was filed against USCIS due to substantial backlogs in the processing of these types of cases, which resulted in many people losing their jobs because they couldn't get their case approved in time. And again, this policy will go into effect on May 17th, 2021. Okay, let's move on to our third update of today's video, which has to do with a new policy from USCIS regarding deference. So what is deference? Basically, the concept of deference is that if USCIS approved your case in the past and you're applying for an extension of that particular case and nothing really has changed since USCIS initially approved the case, this new policy from USCIS is instructing its officers to give deference to the prior approval, to give deference to the prior decision that was made. So take a look at my screen and we'll go through this policy announcement together. As you can see here, we're looking at the actual USCIS policy alert. And as you can see here, it's dated April 27th, 2021. It's titled policy alert. The subject is deference to prior determinations of eligibility and requests for extensions of petition validity. And it gives some background information. Now let's go to the main points right here, the policy highlights. And what it says here is that this policy clarifies that USCIS gives deference to prior determinations when adjudicating extension requests involving the same parties and facts, unless there was a material error material change in circumstances or in eligibility, or new material information that adversely impacts the petitioner's, applicant's, or beneficiary's eligibility. And the second point that it says here is that it affirms that USCIS considers but does not defer to previous eligibility de determinations on petitions or applications made by other U.S. government agencies, that officers make determinations on the evidence of record in the petition or application under adjudication. So again, just to highlight some of the important points of this policy on deference, 
as you can see, basically what this policy alert does, that it says that if a case was initially approved and the parties to that case are the same and there were no material changes, then if, if that party is applying for an extension of that particular immigration benefit, then USCIS should exercise deference and defer to the prior determination. And my last and final update for today's video is regarding a new announcement by USCIS that they are seeking comments from the public to identify any barriers to receiving various immigration benefits. Basically, back on February 2nd, 2021, President Biden signed an executive order on restoring faith in our legal immigration system. Now, as part of USCIS's effort to be compliant with that executive order, they are seeking comment from the public to identify any hurdles or any barriers to receiving immigration benefits, such as naturalization, adjustment of status, and various other benefits. So take a look at my screen and we'll go through this announcement together. So as you can see here, we're on the USCIS website and this is a news release that was dated April 19th, 2021 and it's titled DHS, Department of Homeland Security, seeks public input to identify barriers that limit or prevent access to immigration benefits and services. And it says here, the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, is seeking comments from the public on how U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, can reduce barriers that prevent both U.S. and foreign citizens from obtaining access to the full assortment of legally available immigration services and benefits. Goes on to say more and more stuff. And then it says here, this announcement is part of the department's commitment to fulfilling the promise of President Biden's February 2nd, 2021 Executive Order 14012, restoring faith in our legal immigration systems and strengthening integration and inclusion efforts for new Americans, which directs responsible federal agencies to identify strategies that promote inclusion and identify barriers that impede access to immigration benefits. So as you can see from that text that we just went over, this is part of the Department of Homeland Security's efforts to ensure that we have a more inclusive immigration system and we're specifically identifying any barriers to legal immigration. So there you have it. I know we went over a lot of information in this video. We went over the new suspension on entry from certain people that are seeking entry to the United States that have been physically present in the Republic of India. We also discussed a new USCIS policy regarding biometrics, which will eliminate the need for biometrics for certain people, such as people that are applying for an H4 or an L2. We talked about a new policy that was enacted by USCIS regarding deference to prior cases. And again, lastly, we talked about this new effort from the Department of Homeland Security to seek comment from the public to identify any barriers to lawful immigration. So I hope you guys got a ton of information from this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you know anybody that can benefit from this information, please make sure to share this video with them. As always, our goal is to empower you with knowledge. So the more people that can watch this video that can benefit from this information, the better. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next video.